While we're beyond impressed by such engineering marvels, sometimes it may be hard to believe how big ships can get these days, thanks to the synergistic intervention of man, equipment, and increasingly through the recent times, technology. There are too many factors involved to list regarding the creation of these monoliths on water, but we're here to marvel at some of the finest examples of nautical excellence ever created. They're big, they're beautiful, they're bold, and they're breaking waves around the world. 15 Biggest Ships in the World MV Blue Marlin Cargo Ship when you have the very big job of moving very big boats around the globe, you can call on the MV Blue Marlin Cargo Ship. This mother of cargo carriers can transport 75,000 tons from oil rigs, aircraft carriers, and even other cargo ships. This Blue Marlin is a semi-submersible, heavy-lift ship designed by the good people at Dockwise Shipping in the Netherlands. It's designed to transport huge vessels above the transport ship's deck. But how do you load the cargo onto the massive deck? Even the largest cranes can't manage some of these massive ships. You have to see it to believe it, but the Blue Marlin cargo ship partially submerges itself underwater so its cargo can simply float on top of it. Then they raise the massive ship back up, cradling the cargo to a safe traveling height. And then they're off. The Blue Marlin has been called upon for many huge jobs. At one point, the carrier was tasked with carting the BP oil rig Thunder Horse, which just happens to be the largest offshore rig in the Gulf. The Blue Marlin hauled it 16,000 miles from Korea to the Gulf of Mexico. It helps too, it can accommodate 60 people, a workout room, sauna and swimming facilities, and a panic room in case of pirate attacks. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. Talk about photo op, kayaking with friends around one of the biggest ships in the world? You can tell by the big grin on the gray-haired lady in the forefront that she's really enjoying this adventure through a shipyard. The two kayakers behind her must be as well. It's a pretty impressive spot to cruise the strait. But is it entirely safe? Shipyards are as old as the ships themselves. Like any other production process, shipyards occupy large acres of land on the water and are dedicated to constructing, refurbishing, and repairing different kinds of marine vessels, like ships and submarines. These can be yachts, military vessels, cruise liners, or other cargo or passenger ships. But kayaking? These people better get out of the way. The shipyard involves the deployment of huge manpower, state-of-the-art infrastructure, efficient mechanisms, and systematic processes. It's probably not the best place safety-wise for a pleasure cruise with your kayaking crew. Do you agree? What do you think? Comment below with the hashtag Sweet Topic. The Azam Superyacht. It cost $500 million, four years, and 4,000 people to build this masterpiece, clocking up 6 million man-hours before her launch in 2013. The Azam was the biggest privately owned yacht ever built. It can slice through the waves masterfully with a reported 94,000 horsepower engine. With a beam of 68 feet and an unusually shallow draft of 14 feet 1 inch, it can reach speeds of up to 31 and a half knots, making it one of the fastest super yachts powered by a combination of two gas turbines and two diesel engines. And one of the most expensive super yachts ever. Over 100 people can live on board, but remember, only 36 guests get to luxuriate in supreme comfort. You can practice golf on board too. Guests can tackle their fitness needs by using the onboard gym, pool or practicing their swing in a special golf training room. Not to mention the spa facilities, delicious world-class food, and hospitality excellence. There's a crew of 70 to 80 people to fully accommodate every guest's needs, and if you want to keep it in tip-top shape and full-staffed, the owner must spend over $60 million every year to keep Azam in optimum cruising condition. Queen of the Lakes Queen of the Lakes is the unofficial but widely recognized title given to the longest vessel active on the Great Lakes shared between the United States and Canada. In total, three historic vessels have been bestowed with the title, but none were as mighty as the current queen. At 1,013 and a half feet, the Paul R. Tregurtha, a bulk carrier freighter, is the longest ship on the Great Lakes. She can carry up to 68,000 gross tons or 71,000 net tons, and this ship does not play. 
Her unloading system and 260-foot boom empty the ship's five cargo holds in about eight hours, and she's been through a lot. After it was christened in 1992, the vessel was noted to have had a collision while docking at St. Clair, Michigan. In December 1997, the vessel damaged both her number one port and starboard ballast tanks while docking in Cleveland. The vessel grounded December 1999 on a shoal in Duluth, Minnesota, with no damage being found, and it was cleared to sail only to ground again in the same spot the next day. So yeah, it's had its fair share of troubles on both sides of the border. However, she has an elevator and luxurious guest accommodations. <laughs> USS Enterprise This decommissioned United States Navy aircraft carrier reached legendary status years ago. She was the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and the eighth United States Navy vessel to bear the name USS Enterprise, the Big E. At 1,123 feet, she's the longest naval vessel ever built and had a devoted crew of some 46,000 service members. Commissioned in 1961, the USS Enterprise was the world's first nuclear aircraft carrier. She tracked and measured the flight of the first American orbital space flight, Friendship 7, and during the Cuban Missile Crisis that October, the Enterprise participated in the blockade of Cuba. She was part of the Nuclear Task Force, Operation Sea Orbit from May to October 1964, circling the globe without refueling. Following this cruise, Enterprise was deployed in Vietnam, becoming the first nuclear-powered ship to engage in combat by utilizing her aircraft against the Viet Cong. She entered the Mediterranean in 1986 to assist in the bombing of Libya. Two years later, she was assigned to the Persian Gulf and forced no-fly zones off Bosnia and over Iraq and continued deployments until the USS Enterprise was deactivated in 2012. Oasis Cruise Liners This class of Royal Caribbean International cruise ships is really the only way to sail. In the last decade, the Oasis Cruise Liners have gone from a means of relaxing, scenic transport to vast, vibrant, floating cities. More than 25 million people set sail on a cruise liner in 2017, and with features like these, these ships rose to the occasion. Divided into themed neighborhoods, super fun areas named Entertainment Place, Central Park, Youth Zone, Boardwalk, among others, the Oasis-class ships are designed to prevent crowding and keep passengers busy all day long. With 40-plus eateries and nightclubs, 23 pools, jacuzzis and water slides, two full-size theaters, an ice rink, a surf simulator, climbing walls, zip lines, a carousel, mini golf, a 10-story fun slide, laser tag, a spa, a gym, a casino, the fun just doesn't stop. So, all your friends and family and their very tastes will love any of the Oasis-class ships, Symphony of the Seas, which on its maiden voyage in 2018 became the largest passenger ship ever built, is five times the size of the Titanic at 1,187 feet long and can carry nearly 9,000 people. The Shandong Type 1A Aircraft Carrier Shandong is a first-generation Chinese aircraft carrier that was launched in 2017 for the People's Liberation Army Navy of the People's Republic of China. It's the country's second aircraft carrier and the first built domestically, constructed by China's Dalian Shipbuilding Industry, part of the China Shipbuilding Industry Corporation. The government did not publicly confirm the ship's existence. However, satellite imagery showed the aircraft carrier in the early stages of hull assembly. Public photos of a hull with trademark military characteristics surfaced on the internet too. And in October of 2015, the first definitive signs of the vessel's role appeared when construction of a hangar deck began on the hull. In December 2015, a Chinese Defense Ministry spokesman confirmed that the Shandong was, in fact, very real. The ship's island superstructure was fabricated in two parts, the forward half containing the bridge and main mast, and by the end of 2016, the ship was structurally complete. It displaces roughly 66,000 to 70,000 tons. Its air wing is expected to be significantly large with room for eight additional aircraft and the Shandong aircraft carrier can last six days at sea before refueling. Barzan The United Arab Shipping Company named the industry's most eco-efficient container vessel with the Barzan, the newest member of the industry's first LNG-ready ultra-large container vessel fleet. Barzan is Arabic for the high place, but should really mean big. It was built by Hyundai Heavy Industries in South Korea in 2015 with a dead weight of 199,744 tons. 
and it took the shipyard six months to build. With a loading capacity of 18,800 tons, it's the first in its class, the largest in their fleet to date and with new greener standards for fuel and energy efficiency. Its optimized vessel design, major propulsion and state-of-the-art equipment efficiency tech, and they're continuing to establish a range of additional metrics and targets through which the Barzan's efficiency can be managed to drive further reduction in carbon emissions. Her energy efficiency design index is quoted as almost 50% less than the International Maritime Organization limit set for 2025. As of August 2015, she was placed on a service route regularly between Asia and Europe. This route takes her to the ports of North China, Central China, South China, Southeast Asia, and four North European ports. USS Nimitz the USS Nimitz was commissioned in May 1975 and was only the second nuclear-powered carrier ever built after the iconic USS Enterprise. It was named after Chester William Nimitz Sr., the legendary naval commander who was the commander-in-chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet and the leader of all Allied operations in the Pacific during World War II. Instead of the gas turbines or diesel electric systems used on many modern warships, the carriers used two pressurized water reactors which drove four propeller shafts and produced a maximum speed of over 30 knots and a maximum power of around 260,000 horsepower. As a result of the use of nuclear power, the ships were capable of operating for over 20 years without refueling. Nuclear reactors give carriers a number of advantages. Their range is virtually unlimited, measured by years of operation instead of miles, and the space created by not needing to carry fuel allows them to carry twice as much aircraft fuel and up to 30% more weaponry. At 1,092 feet long, the USS Nimitz carried over 60 aircraft and comfortably housed 5,000 sailors and marines. Nimitz and the 13 submarines are expected to go through the recycling process over the next five years. It will be the end to a nearly 50-year career for the Nimitz. <laughs> Pioneering Spirit Pioneering Spirit's unparalleled single-lift technology will be used to remove two gas production platforms from the East Irish Sea. The world's largest construction vessel will put out the two 11,000-ton platforms and transport to shore for recycling. But what makes this crane vessel so amazing? Pioneering Spirit is the largest construction vessel in the world. Inspired by the offshore heavy-lifting pioneer Peter Schelt Herima and designed completely in-house, the vessel is designed for the single-lift installation and removal of large oil and gas platforms and the installation of record-weight pipelines. The 1,253 feet long, 407 feet wide vessel is capable of lifting entire platform topsides of up to 48,000 tons in a single piece. It can lift and transport entire topsides using eight sets of horizontal lifting beams, which can rotate on hinges. Complementing the lifting systems is a 5,000 ton special purpose crane for additional lifts, such as lighter topsides and jackets, modules, and bridges. While the vessel moves due to wave action, all motions relative to the platform are eliminated by engaging the active motion compensation system, which enables the pioneering spirit to make large lifts everywhere. MOL Triumph The ship was christened in a ceremony in South Korea on March 15, 2017. The Triumph has five sister ships in its class, the Trust, Tribute, Tradition, Truth, and Treasure. But the Triumph trumps them all. Triumph was the world's largest vessel with an overall length of 1,312 feet and a width of 193 feet. In line with the eco-sailing initiative of MOL, the Triumph was equipped with various highly advanced energy-saving technologies including low-friction underwater paint, high-efficiency propeller and rudder, and an optimized fine hull form which together can further reduce fuel consumption and CO2 emissions per container moved by about 25-30%. or 30%. Additionally, the vessel was designed with the retrofit option to convert to LNG-fueled ship according to the International Maritime Organization's regulations to limit SOX emission in marine fuels. The Mo Triumph set off on her maiden voyage in 2017. <laughs> RMS Queen Mary II the legendary British transatlantic ocean liner RMS Queen Mary II has served as the flagship of Cunard Line since 2004 and easily is one of the most luxurious passenger ships in regular service between England and New York City. Check out these perks, a 570-seat 3D cinema, a planetarium, and a library with more than 8,000 books. 
Decks 12 and 13 have golf simulators, paddle tennis, basketball, and shuffleboard facilities. And for the kids, a play zone offers hours of entertainment and activities. And for the grown-up kids, other facilities aboard the ship include a casino, a ballroom, and 15 restaurants and bars. Six penthouses feature butler and concierge service and private balconies. The five duplex apartments are two stories high with private elevators and more than 1,650 square feet in floor area. Even the crew have their own bars, restaurant, cinema, gym, and like the passengers, a computer school. And the Queen Mary 2 has a satellite system in geosynchronous orbit with the ocean liner 22,300 miles above the equator. It has a maximum speed of just over 30 knots, which is faster than a contemporary cruise ship using an integrated electric propulsion to achieve her top speed. <laughs> Class Supertankers the original TI class of supertankers comprises the ships TI Africa, TI Asia, TI Europe, and TI Oceania. The first ultra-large crude carriers to be built in three decades. They have contributed greatly to the transport of crude oil through waterways for many years. They were built in South Korea in 2002 and 2003 for the Hellespont Group Shipping Company. And they're so revered, the four ships all together are famously known as the Fantastic Four. They're all dual-haul ships, and they're safe for sharing oil without causing spills and safely avoid major environmental hazards in case of accidents. Almost all of them have a speed of about 16 and a half knots, which is exceptionally high, which allows the fast and time-efficient transport of cargo across the globe. The coatings in the ballast tanks are protected by two features, a full-time double scrubbing system supplying drier inert gas to the ballast tanks, and also by the white painted upper hull reflecting the sun's energy. It's way safer and greener. Keeping down the cargo temperatures also minimizes hydrocarbon emissions. The Fantastic Four always delivers. <laughs> Charles de Gaulle Aircraft Carrier Charles de Gaulle is France's only aircraft carrier, a nuclear-powered, 856-foot-long ship whose primary striking power is provided by a multi-role fighter jet. The feature that places the de Gaulle in the lead of most aircraft carriers is the ability to operate airborne early warning and control planes, easily detecting enemies to intercept them beyond surface radar range. The ship's nuclear reactor could also allow laser weapons, either as part of the initial package or down the road in future upgrades. It also allows it to reach a crisis situation without stopping to refuel. In 2007, it began a refit which included overhaul and refueling of the nuclear propulsion system and installing a new command and control system with an even better satellite communication system. Add an overall replacement of the control room, modernization of tactical system, newer telecommunication systems, radar replacement, as well as the renovation and recalibration of the steering control system. The aviation installation and spaces were also upgraded, and after another major midlife refit, from 2017 to 2018, it could extend the life of the vessel for 25 more years. Prelude FLNG Check out these specs. It took 600 engineers to dream up Prelude FLNG's design. Its width is even bigger than a Boeing 747's wingspan, and its height is still taller than the iconic Big Ben in London and the Statue of Liberty in the United States. Four soccer fields, laid end to end, would be shorter than the facility's deck, and 175 Olympic-sized swimming pools could hold the same amount of liquid as the facility's storage tanks. 50 million liters of cold water are drawn from the ocean every hour to help cool the natural gas, and six of the largest aircraft carriers would displace the same amount of water as this platform. And let's not forget the 6,700 horsepower thrusters. Prelude FLNG is the first floating liquefied natural gas platform in the world, the largest offshore facility ever built up to date. Its innovation removes the need for pumping the gas to land-based processing plants. The ability to produce liquefied natural gas in sea is an incredible leap forward. After all, it can be redeployed by new fields, uses 50% less materials, and has 95% less land and seabed disturbance than the usual land-based refineries. A marine engineering masterpiece. The Nock Nevis Last but not least, the MV Nock Nevis was the world's largest ship ever until it was scrapped in one of the shipyards in India in 2010. This sea giant was so large that four soccer fields could be laid end to end on her deck. It took five and a half miles to stop with a turning circle of over two miles. 
The rudder alone weighed 230 tons, the equivalent of 46 elephants, and the Nock Nevis weighed more than 657,000 tons when fully loaded. However, from beginning to end, the ship had been through a series of interesting incidents right from the get-go. In 1986, it was hit by missiles in the Iran-Iraq War and sank in shallow water off Iran's Karg Island and declared a total write-off. However, she served 21 more years, her massive hulk dragged from the seabed and renovated as good as new. The Nock Nevis, completed in 1979, changed hands and was renamed six times during its 30-year service before finally being sold for scrap. It's a pity that a vessel of such high prestige is now scrapped, but something of this size would never fit in any museum. But it was practically a floating masterpiece while it was in service. Those were the 15 biggest ships in the world. Thanks for watching.